Hey, welcome back to the JavaScript series. So now we are going to number seven, which is uh, functions. Okay, so what is exactly a function? Now, so far what we've been doing is we've been adding code to the script tag directly here. Now, the only problem with this is that immediately I load the page, this code right here will run, yeah? So let me come back here. And if I refresh my page, you see that the code runs immediately. Now, there are times when we want specific code to run only following a specific event. So let's say, for example, when the, when the user moves a mouse through one item or the other, or when the user types something, and then it needs to check whether what they've typed is correct or not. So the code needs to be able to, to run at that specific instant to check if the input is good or not. So in order to afford that kind of luxury, we need to use functions. Now what a function does is it gets a group of code and puts it inside a container. Now that code will only run when it is code. When somebody calls it, it's going to run, otherwise it's ignored. So like here we have this code that is already here and if we don't want it to run immediately, we put it inside a function. So to create a function, we just use the keyword a function like this, and then we give it a name. So the name of the function can be anything, it's just like a variable, right? So we can say function uh, number, or just function, uh, let's say check, something like that. Now, after you write the name of the function, you have to put uh, brackets like that, parentheses, and then you put the other parentheses there, the curly bracket like this. So we're encapsulating, uh, putting this code inside a capsule, which is a container, this one between here and there. So since this is inside a function, it will no longer run immediately, we run our page. So let me refresh so you can see that. Refresh and nothing has run, okay? It will run, however, if we call it, let's call it here, and to call a function, just call its name, and then put the brackets there, like this. And that's it. And we call it. So, refresh. Mm -hmm. Now it's running. But, okay, not only can we put brackets there, these brackets are meant to cover up some variables. So let's say variable number is not in here, it's outside the function, like this, okay? So now what's happening is that variable number is accessible inside the function as well. When we do this, we're asking if number is correct or not. Uh, when we say number in here, we're talking about this one. But when it was inside the function like this, if I had another variable called number outside here, it would be a different variable than that one. Okay. Or if it's not the same name though, I think uh, there's bleeding in that happens here. But if for example, I say um, variable number is right here, right? Okay. Now, if I do declare the variable here, down here and say variable number is equal to something like nine, so what will happen here is uh, this will actually change that one, okay? It will. It will change the original one. If I don't want it to change, I have to use another keyword called let, like this. So let isolates, um, so when I say let number is equal to 9, then whatever I'm using in here is this number here, and it won't affect that one there, okay? But if... Uh, I declare just a different variable down here and say var a is equal to zero, like that. This variable in here is not going to be accessible out here. So if I say alert a over here, okay, so I will remove that so that this doesn't run the function itself. I'm just going to say alert, uh, it won't know what this a is, even though it's declared inside a function. So if I go to the console, I will see an error here. Reference A is not defined. So keep in mind that whatever you define inside a function stays in the function. It doesn't bleed outside. But whatever you declare outside a function can be, de can be used inside a function or outside the function. Okay, so very important. 
Now the problem here is with our function like this is if we are using variables that are from the outside, like in this case, we are saying number is equal to six and then we're using it here. It becomes very difficult to know where a number was changed. Let's say you're trying to figure out your code and say, uh, where did I change this number uh, from? Let's say, for example, you're running number here is equal to six, but by the time you get here, number is 10. You have to now start going in to check where did I change this? Where did I change that? And that becomes a little bit difficult, especially if you, instead of putting inline code like this, you are using files, you are including just the files. You have to go to each file and see which function is changing this variable. Now, to avoid such things, we pass the variable, uh, we pass the variable into the function deliberately. So here, when we call the function, instead of just calling the function, we pass the variable as well. So here I say number, is equal to six, right? I'll copy that and pass number in there. That way I have access to number from this side, like so, okay? Now the advantage of doing it this way is that because if one day I carry my function to another project, it will not say this number is undefined because it will be defined there. So it will be self-contained in other words. So it's a way to pass items through. So when calling it, you pass the items that you want to get from the outside into the function. That way the function becomes self-contained. It's not interfering with processes that are outside the function itself. So this is a much better way of programming things. Okay. So this is one way of declaring a function. So let's, let's write a very, uh, a much simpler function here that just does an echo. So I just tell it to echo not echo, sorry, I'm used to PHP. So let's use an alert here, alert uh, number. Mm -hmm. So let's alert ourselves to the value of number. And then once we run this, I want to alert ourselves again to the value of number out here. Okay, so I'm going to run this function. It will alert me to value of number. And then I want to change number and say number is equal to 10, right? And then I would do an alert of number. Let's see if the number has been manipulated. So I'll refresh my page. So number is six, quite all right. And then it's still six outside here. So as you can see, I have isolated number successfully because when I alerted it here, it was six. Even though I changed it to 10, it found that once I alerted it again, it's still equal to six. And that's because this number I passed in here I created it like a new copy, which I am using in here. And whatever I do to it does not affect the number that is outside. So this is how you successfully encapsulate things to isolate them and avoid a lot of bugs. Okay, so now you can add more than one variable here. If there are other variables outside, you have to add maybe a number and this word here. So you can put a comma and add as many as you want. Or you can add an array of items, a group of items in one variable and use them in here, okay? So that is okay. The only thing is once you declare it, if I add two items here, I must add two items here. Otherwise I will get an error as well. If I refresh, you will see that. Uh... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, then I guess uh, JavaScript is more forgiving because I declared two items here, but I only gave one and uh, it kind of worked. Well, I actually didn't know that you can do that because I'm used to very strict languages like C and um, PHP. Okay, so there, that uh, that's how you pass items inside here into the function, but this is only one way of declaring a function. So I can also declare a function just like I declare a variable because in JavaScript, everything is actually an object. So including functions as well. Functions are kind of like variables, but that can do things instead of just holding a value. So here I can say something like var b is equal to function like this, okay? So let me remove this extra one here. So as you can see now is uh, 
this is no longer a thing. Now, if I do this, I say var b is equal to function. I don't need to put in function name there. It will be like that. So it's going to be var b is equal to function. So the function is called b now. So this doesn't make sense anymore. So how do I call a function like this? Well, exactly the same. I'll just put b instead, like so. So come back here, refresh, and it runs just like normal. So as you can see, you can assign a function into a variable. If I want, I can do it like check so that uh, this function call remains the same like that. Okay, so var check is equal to function without a name. And then we run the function like that. Okay, there we go. So this kind of this way of declaring functions becomes very important for when you are dealing with objects that you want certain variables to be functions. And yeah, especially when you're dealing, dealing with objects and you're dealing with event listeners and the like, which we're going to learn uh, in coming videos. Okay, so this is all what a function does. So your takeaway from this should be that a function holds a certain amount of data, okay? And it encapsulates it. It encapsulates it, which means it isolates it from the outside world. Now, the advantage of, uh, the advantage of uh, functions is that they can return a value. So for example, if I say function calculate, right? I was just say calc like this and do that so i'll say number one and then number number two so i have two numbers here so there is number which is one equal to six and then there's number two which is equal to uh, eight something like this so now i'm passing both of these when i run the function and then i want it to calculate so I'll say alert so it can alert me number one plus number two, like this, right? So quite all right, if I call the function down here, calc, and then add the numbers here, number one, number two, uh, this is going to work. 14, right? But I can also add hard-coded numbers here, like five, and then, uh, three, like so, because these will be shoved into these variables right here and then used for calculation. So if I run like this, I get eight, which is good. But instead of alerting all the time, I can tell it to return the value and say return like this. So every time you use return, if I had any code down here, like, uh, like if I say alert here, something like that, this code will never run here because there's a return right here return means exit the function return whatever is given and then exit the function so this will never run but the point is if i return i'm not alerting anything i'm just returning the value back to where i called the function from so if i refresh i don't see any result because i have to capture the result here so i'll say variable maybe e is equal to that so once i do this it means that whatever the result of this function call will be shoved in there inside e. Then I can do a console.log of whatever e contains at that point. Okay, so let's try this and I will refresh. And you see that e now contains number eight. Very good. But you notice that the alert doesn't run. If I remove the uh, return there, you will see that it will run this time. You see there. So every time you add that return, that's where the, um, the code will stop executing from. So normally or ideally, every function should have a return at the end. If you don't add the return in the function, it will do it automatically. So you don't really need to add it. It will be automatic. It will return a no. Uh, or false or something like that automatically by itself so let's try that and just not return anything here so i'm just going to do this and that then let's see what uh, e contains so i'll refresh and e contains undefined because nothing has been put inside that e unless i return something there in the function and then it will get something yes 
Okay, so there's more to functions, but we're going to see how we use them, especially in conjunction with uh, event listeners, then we can get something running on the page that is very useful. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.